I created a series of very simple macros and I listed them alphabetically in a form with a list box. That form pops up when this file opens and I can do any macro from here. Let's say we, we happen to have narrow columns. We have an auto size macro that fixes all of that. I can call a calendar for this month, this year for instance, and I get a calendar. Uh, I can also show the formulas. If I want to turn the formulas back off, I just double click on that thing. So I either click or double click. And so there are many more. I can show grids and hide them like I just did or show them again. I can insert sheets, paste values, etc. Whatever macro you created, you need a listing here. So what do we have to do? We have to talk to the VBA code that holds these macros. And we are going to read that code. So we are going to use VBA to manage VBA. In order to do so, you have to make sure that you allow that to be done. File, options, and we go to Trust Center, Trust Center settings, and there we are going to say for the macro settings, trust access to the VBA project object model. So we are going to access the VBA project. So once you have set that, and accept all of that, then we should be able to talk to VBA. However, in order to do so, I need one more step. In my VBA code, by the way, in the left panel, you see we have macros and we have user forms. The macros is a very simple collection of simple macros. Whatever macros you have will be fine. I call that module macros or module one, whatever you want. Then I created a user form. A user form, insert user form, place a list box on it, and that's going to hold all the code. We are going to the code window behind the user form. So I also have to talk to VBA components. In order to be able to do that in the user form activate, we need a reference to that library. Tools, references, and make sure that you have access to the Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications extensibility library. Make sure that you check that on. And once you have that, you can call an object like a VBA component. Now we can talk to that. Let's give the form a caption, list of macros, and we set the object variable VBC of the type VB, VB component to this workbook, VB project, of all the components, the one that is called macros, this one. We are going to count all the lines in that module. We run from line one to the, the number of lines we have in total in that VBA project. If we find the word sub on a line, that means that we are dealing with a sub routine, and I'm setting a few more properties. If you want to know what they do, this one says what is the start column, the start line, I, one, two, three, four, five. That one is the end line as long, minus one, no, end column as long, minus one. Then whole word, true, it has to be the whole word sub, not part of a word. And the last one in this case is match case as boolean. If that is all the case, then we go to store those sub words in an array. We had declared an array, two actually. 
with the parentheses you make sure that it's going to be an array there is nothing in the array yet it has not been dimensioned yet so we have to read them with a preserved keyword so we don't lose what was in there already array j the first time that is zero and then plus one two three four and we put in the the last elements the line i up to one line and if next i don't forget to set j back to zero for the next operation that is coming now we are going to loop through that array from zero to u bound array one all arrays are zero bound if the left of that first element is the word sub, then we are going to look at their parentheses in string starting at one in that array one. If there are parentheses, that means if it did find one, otherwise in string would return zero. It found those parentheses. Read in preserve array two and we use j again and then we put in that array two from array one the mid part starting at position five sub is three open close parentheses is five we look for the in strength for the open parentheses minus five And if, and if, next I, and then we are going to alphabetize those arrays. So we do that with a for loop within a for loop. So this is the inner loop. In the outer loop, we are going to say from zero to U bound array two minus one. The inner loop starts at i and compares it with the next one, etc., etc. If array 2i is greater than array 2j, then store that in a temporary variable, put array i and put j into i, and put in j the temporary value. That is just a simple sorting routine. And then we are going to add them to the list box. List box one dot add item array to element i. Then we have to do a little more when someone clicks on a list box. We run the text from that list box one. So let's say the sub was called preview. Then we run the preview subroutine. We do events, that means we, we give the machine time to execute that line. And we also want a double click event in case people had already clicked on it and they want to redo it. And that's a double click. Run listbox one text, do events. Now we have to open the user form when the workbook opens. So we go to this workbook. And we have their user form one show when the workbook opens, show it VB modeless. That means that box will stay there, that user form. And in the meantime, I can still work on my sheet. If I made that VB model, then I had to close the user form all the time in order to work on the sheet. And then I put the left of the user form one to the right of the active window take the width of the active window and I took 200 units away from the width so we can actually find the list box and there is the list box this is 200 units away from the width of that screen for the left of the box so now everything should work fine if I want a preview of the sheet it gives me a preview. If I want to insert a sheet, it asks me what the sheet name is. Let's say AA. And I got a new sheet. If I want to use the dollar one, 
I can take the pennies away or with a double click I can get them back. So all of this was done with VBA, working on VBA. To find much more information on all these issues, I created two CD-ROMs, Excel 2007 VBA, which still is applicable to 2013. But at the beginning of 2014, this CD-ROM will also be available. It has a bit more information and it also covers more new developments in VBA. There aren't many, so they are practically equivalent, but the second one is a little bit more comprehensive. In part one, we discuss basic essentials such as looping, variables, etc. In part two, we do formulas and arrays. How do you create arrays in Excel? They are very important in Excel because Excel spreadsheets are basically array sheets. And how do you make your formulas? And finally, in part three, how do we make buttons, forms, and many more things? And what we just discussed was VBA, monitoring VBA. How do you distribute your VBA code, etc.